Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great lesson for us. Firstly, I'm, I'm proud of the players, the, the, the performance and the effort they've given. Um, tactically, we had to change it slightly at half-time. I think when you come to Belgium, they made six changes from the team that we played in June and it made them stronger. We were without five players today that would you know, make us stronger, potentially. So we were without Harry Wilson, Aaron Ramsey, Joe Allen, Ben Davis. Couldn't start Gareth. Understandably, it would have been crazy to start him. So put those five players in the team as well. And... Um, and it makes you a little bit stronger as well. So um, we wanted to still have the same principles. We want to be aggressive. We want to be brave in our press. And when you're up against Hazard and De Bruyne in, in the space in behind, um, when they get the ball, they're going to hurt you. And having said that, De Bruyne's chance, again, it's a half chance, but he has a knack of, of just finding those corners, doesn't he? And uh, he's a world-class talent. And uh, having said that, I thought we started getting out of the game really well for 10 minutes. I thought we'd done all right. And then the sucker punch with a goal. But I think when we changed shape to 5-4-1, it made us a bit more compact, solid, knowing that we had people like DJ on the pitch and Brennan was outstanding, always a threat in the counter-attack, then we were going to hurt teams. Um, can you, you just mentioned the formation. Can you explain <coughs> what, you, what you told the, the, the team at half-time and how you changed things up? Because there were, as you say, a lot of space, a lot of room for Azar. Yeah. Broyne was working around. Yeah. This is supposed to be the opportunity to learn when things maybe aren't going right here at the World Cup. Yeah. Pressure games, big crowds, noisy... What did, you, what did you say to the team at half-time? We couldn't press high because we were getting played through. We, you know, when you haven't got a lot of time to work on it as well with different personnel, so the personnel changed. We wouldn't normally play a Kiefer out and out centre-forward. You know, so Kiefer was brilliant you know, trying to come in as that 10 and, and, and getting the ball for us. Um, we couldn't press high. Every time we pressed high, they played through us. And, they got, you know, and when you make the pitch expansive and you've got good world-class players on the ball, they're going to hurt you. So we, we changed that half time, we dropped a little bit deeper. I changed the shape from a, um, uh, well, we went to a 5 5 4 1 with the two city midfielders, and then I got Brennan and DJ to play as, as wide men, but narrow, just to help Ethan in the middle of the park a little bit to, to sort of shut that space and stop him getting on the ball. How, then, <coughs> how good an exercise is trying to look on the hostage? How good yeah. an exercise was this for the World Cup? Lessons learned, as you say getting the tactical formations right and the players adapting quickly when needed. How useful an exercise could tonight actually be? Absolutely. And, you know, I've thrown Matty in out of nowhere. You know, Joe Morrell couldn't start because he's suffered with an injury and hasn't had many minutes. So, again, it would have been crazy to start him. So, I put Matty in. Great experience for him. Great experience for us to um, adapt when things aren't going right. And, um, and like I said, there's, there's been lessons learned taking us into the World Cup. I said to them in the changing room, we've asked for this. By qualifying for the World Cup, we've, we've asked to compete against opposition like Belgium, like Holland. And we've been in the games going right up until the 93rd, 94th minute. So it speaks volumes about that group of players. And tactically, of course, we're going to have to make tweaks and changes. We have to respect the number two seed in the world, by the way. You know, and we come away from home and it's 2-1 right up to the death and we're still creating chances. So there's too many positives. I'm not going to be negative. I've said to them, it's all, it's one game now. We get a win on Sunday, we stay in the division. And, and, and if we've come from June to now, where we've qualified for the World Cup and stayed in the division, then that's a massive achievement for those players. Um, Rob, can you explain why you, you couldn't start Gav? You used you, in the previous answer, it'd be crazy to do so. Can you, can you explain? Well, <clears throat> all the travelling, Gary. Right? You know, coming back from America, that, that, the, the time difference coming back is, is, is hard work for the players to adapt to. Um, we couldn't get him on grass. He couldn't do any training. So to throw him straight into a competitive game against Belgium away would have been, you know, crazy to do so and, and risk his his body and his and get an injury for long term then for the World Cup so I was never going to do that. What could he give you on Sunday? What, what, could, you, could he conceivably start Sunday? We're going to pick a team that's going to want to go and win the game so um, the plan was always to play him as few minutes tonight as we possibly could with, with one eye on Sunday so might be a different outcome on Sunday. Barry. Hi Rob. character of the players never never you know they'll never give up they'll never give up we said at half time go and get the next goal you know two nils a, a funny score line when you're two nil up you don't want to concede a goal because then it's like oh you know they get a bit nervous um so it's the character of the players their mindset they'll never give up we'll keep going right to the end and uh, we've proved it time and time again against two world-class teams in in holland and belgium
Sunday yeah. with your fate in your own hands? Have you taken that? Yeah, off the back of playing a final after the first game at Poland away. You know, we it's just the way it's it's you know, panned out. Um we're not gonna we're not gonna sit and grumble about it. It is what it is, but you know, it did have an impact. It had an impact on the team selection for Poland, it had an impact uh, for the team selection three days after the final for Holland, one hundred percent. Would it have been a different outcome if I'd have had the starting eleven available? Who knows? But we would have probably had a better chance of winning those two games and we might not be sitting here waiting to go into that last game. But the fact that we are, we'll take it with both hands and uh, and and rise to the challenge again. And regardless of what happens on Sunday, watching the Belgian players and the fans kind of come together at the final whistle, cheering them off before they go off to the World Cup, how great would it be for you and the players to soak it up on Sunday, knowing that next time you see them yeah. in Qatar? Yeah, brilliant. I'm looking forward to it. I've, you know, there's 33,000 sold already. I can't thank the supporters enough. They're massive for us. You know, the, the travelling fans today just short of 3,000, I do think, weren't it? Yeah. Incredible. You know, I'm seeing the footage of, of them enjoying themselves in, in Brussels last night, and it's excellent. That's what it's all about, you know, for the supporters as well to enjoy that. And uh, and we've got nothing but respect for them, and we look forward to, to playing a home game on Sunday, hopefully get a positive result, and, and they can send us off to the to the World Cup. Just another word on the key difference in the game recently after all the time. Yeah. Yeah, his his, level, his uh, record at this level is is very good, isn't it? He, he poses a threat. Like I said, I asked him to do a slightly different, play a slightly different way today. Normally, when we play that way, it's Gareth dropping into those ten positions, but Kiefer tried to do it the best he could and and thoroughly deserved his goal. And uh, and I thought he'd done right until he picked up that slight knock. No, we, we'll assess him. He, he just took a, a, a whack to the arm, so we'll um, we'll assess him overnight and and see how he is for Sunday. Ian. Ian Rob, you touched on Dunley Johnson earlier. Yeah. He's become a player who really affects things in the final third and now sorry in the game as well, of course. Just how pleased are you with him with the impact he's had on international Yeah, he's he's been superb, honestly. He's come on so much in, in such a, a short time, hasn't he? So um you know, again I've asked something different from him today. I've asked him to play as a as a midfielder, but when we get the ball to find him in those pockets where De Bruyne and Hazard pick the ball up and and when you see him run with the ball it's, it's brilliant, isn't it? That's his game. That's his strength. Um, and he always looked the threat every time he got the ball for us when we won it. In terms of the game on Sunday, you were handed with the last one before that Ukraine game. But how different is this one compared to the game? Completely different. We, you know, we've just got to recover the lads um, from tonight. There'll be some changes made, and um, we'll go and put a team out that we, we want to win the game. It's a, it's a final. For, forget the World Cup. It's the, this is the game that we want to win on Sunday. Okay, thank you. Right. See you in Cardiff. Thanks a lot.